Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a comedy horror film, Jack Brooks, Monster Slayer. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins centuries ago, in the middle of a jungle in Africa. A group of warriors fights a monster using their sharp spears. However, the monster is simply too powerful for them. With such ease, the monster defeats the warriors one by one, using its brute force and giant weapon. After seeing their injured comrades, the group falls back, realizing they are no match for the monster. Having no choice, the people call their strongest warrior. The scene transitions to modern times. A student named Jack narrates his difficult life. He says that the people around him always criticize his aggressive behavior. Although not proud of it, Jack admits that it is true. Because of it, he was used to getting in trouble. One day, Jack faces a sanction for hitting his teammate in soccer. After doing many laps of running, the coach says he should apologize to his teammate. Jack does not want to apologize at first, reasoning that he hit his teammate because he elbowed him in the face. Still controlling his emotions, he apologizes to the poor kid at last. Pissed off, Jack goes to the locker room very mad. As he enters inside, a boy then bumps into him unintentionally. Angry, he repeatedly picks up the chair and slams it on the floor. Still, Jack narrates that he was not always aggressive. He says there were times when he remained calm, especially when he was still a kid. He also says that he had a complete, supportive family back then. However, his happy moments ended when something happened that changed things forever. During their night camping with his family, Jack's sister was taken by an unknown monster. Immediately, Jack's parents came to the rescue. However, the monster just mauled them to death. The monster brutally massacred Jack's family without standing a chance. Fortunately, Jack was able to escape the jungle. However, the massacre of his family has traumatized him ever since, and his life has changed drastically. Moving on to the current times, because of Jack's aggressive behavior, he decides to go to a counselor to help him manage his anger issues. In one of their sessions, Jack updates his counselor on what is happening to his life. Fortunately, Jack says that he has not snapped for a while. However, Jack confides that he lied and still snapped a few days ago, but insists that it is nothing big. Moreover, the counselor notices Jack's broken hand and asks him how his hand got injured. Jack could not keep his secret. He loses control of his emotions and says he punched one of his clients. After vomiting a lot of words, Jack proceeds to leave the office. Jack goes to his school for his class. Professor is very disappointed in him because he is late. Jack goes inside the classroom and looks for his chair, unbothered. The professor discusses the chemical sodium. He tells his students how it could be potentially explosive. To demonstrate, the professor submerges sodium in water. In a matter of seconds, the sodium explodes, and every student thinks it is cool. After the discussion, Jack's girlfriend shows her frustration to him. She hates that Jack often comes to class very late, and that Jack has missed driving her on campus two times already. Taking advantage of the situation, a long-haired boy comes to flex his long hair and invites Jack's girlfriend to hang out with him. Professor calls Jack to talk to him. Knowing that Jack is a plumber, he invites Jack to his house to look at his broken pipes. Seeing the emergency, Jack commits that he will go to his professor's house later that night. In the next scene, the sun has set already. Jack then drives his van to go to the professor's house. Jack is greeted enthusiastically by his professor. He says he bought the house cheaply because the property has a weird history. To introduce his problem, the professor leads him to the pipes. After seeing the pipes, Jack immediately thinks that they are clogged. After doing dirty work for quite some time, Jack calls Professor to try if the sink is already working. Unfortunately, because of strong water pressure, the valve breaks down. Out of nowhere, a small area of the ground splits in two, and a very light object shows between it. Returning to the house, Jack says that the valve needs to be replaced completely for the sink to work. Unluckily, Jack's car could not fully start. Jack shows his aggressive behavior and punches the steering wheel repeatedly. After some bumping, the van starts, and Jack can leave. The ground that was split earlier appears again. This time, a lot of smoke is seen coming out of it. Slowly, the smoke goes inside the house, while Professor sleeps peacefully. As the Professor smells the smoke, he wakes up suddenly, and his whole eyes turn black. Not being his usual self, the Professor acts strange and struggles to open a door. As he bumps himself repeatedly toward it, he goes outside his house. Jack returns to his counselor to discuss his anger issues. The counselor advises him to do two things to make himself relax, meditate or play some sport. However, Jack finds his counselor's advice ridiculous and useless, especially if he is already snapping. Getting angry again, he slams the door and leaves. Professor appears again, because of what happened last night, his nose is bleeding. He is seen lying on the ground out of nowhere. 
Fortunately, Professor comes to his senses when he hears his dog barking. He is clueless about how he ended up sleeping outside last night. He also realizes that he was digging the ground last night, judging by his dirty hands. Curious about it, he takes a shovel and further digs the ground to look at what is underground. After digging for quite some time, he hears a sound, implying something below the soil. He then finds a broken pipe and a hidden container underneath. As he opens the container, he sees what seems like human bones. He also sees a heart that is still intact and whole. Professor is amazed at how the heart survives for a long time. Just then, the bodiless hearts start pumping out of nowhere. Although amazed, the professor thinks that it is impossible. Annoyed, he tries to destroy the heart with his bare hands. Strangely, he suddenly could not control his body. Not knowing the reason, something controls his body, and he eats the beating heart out of his free will. After swallowing the greasy heart, he loses consciousness. In the next scene, Jack goes to a hardware store to look for a replacement for Professor's valve. The owner says he has not seen a valve like that for a long time, and he has to order one for Jack especially. Curious about it, the owner asks Jack where he has been plumbing. After revealing the place, the owner says Jack should not be messing up with that place. He says that the old house is cursed. The owner then asks Jack if he believes in monsters. Then, he invites Jack to return to his shop tomorrow evening to give the valve and tell Jack about the legend of the cursed old house. In the next scene, Professor wakes up after swallowing the heart. Acting like he is not himself, he eats all his food in the refrigerator raw like an animal. The next day, Jack goes to his chemistry class. After talking to a girl, Professor enters the classroom, acting strange. He walks to the front, all dirty and smelly. Some students laugh at their professor because they think it is a joke. One concerned student asks Professor if he is sick, and the professor replies that he's indeed sick, but only by a little. Again, the scene shows that Professor cannot again fully control his body. As he tries to write on the blackboard, he cannot fully write what he wants, because something is already controlling his body. Looking for help, he draws a heart on the blackboard to send a message to the students, telling them that he started acting weird after he ate a heart. Moreover, the professor cannot control it, and he putes on the blackboard, which disgusts the whole class. The professor shouts that he's starving, and says that the class is already dismissed. In the next scene, Jack's girlfriend talks again with the long-haired boy. Jack then confronts her and tells her to go. Pretending to be a good guy, the long-haired boy talks with Jack, telling him that he's making the girl uncomfortable and that he's not okay with his behavior. He then tells Jack to smoke something to keep him relaxed. Annoyed and not liking the idea, Jack punches the guy in the face, which makes him fall. Meanwhile, Professor is seen eating like an animal. His dog starts barking at him. It reveals that the messy dog knows that the Professor is not the same master anymore. Some unknown, long slimy figure comes out from the Professor's stomach. To prevent it from growing, he takes scissors to cut it. With a bottomless stomach, the professor once again opens the refrigerator to eat everything. However, he's not satisfied with vegetables, but prefers the yummy dog. Next, Jack meets with his counselor again. To trace the roots of Jack's behavior, the counselor asks if Jack could talk about the death of his family. However, Jack does not want to remember it. Jack says that he used to tell people what he saw, but they did not believe them. Jack's girlfriend thought he did not tell about it. Jack says that he ran away during that time and could have stayed. After that, Jack returns to the shop to pick up the new valve. The owner reminds Jack again that the professor's house is cursed and he should be careful. After sipping some alcohol, the owner narrates his anecdote about that place. He says that he used to live there with his uncle. As a researcher, his uncle collected rare artifacts. However, one in particular that the owner remembers is a heart from Japan. It reveals that that heart could be the same one the professor ate. The owner says that his uncle also told him a legend about that heart. A long time ago, a demon made his way to Earth to spread terror worldwide. Fortunately, the warriors defeated him and kept the demon's heart as a trophy. However, the legend said that evil still lurked within. His uncle also believed that the heart he bought in Japan was the demon's heart. The uncle ate the heart one day. Ever since that, he has been acting strange and had an appetite that's never seen before, similar to the professor. The owner confirmed that his uncle was turning into a demon when he saw his uncle eating their dog. When he confronted him, the uncle was also trying to eat him. Fortunately, he took hold of a shotgun and killed his uncle to defend himself. This reveals that Professor is slowly transforming into a demon too, as he has similar symptoms to the owner's uncle. It's also revealed that the human bones found by Professor earlier were the bones of the owner's uncle buried by the owner, together with the beating heart. This connects all the dots that happened to Professor. In the next scene, Jack returns to school for his chemistry class. 
He and his girlfriend quarrel because of his recent snap. After the heated argument, they go to the classroom and witness their professor in a terrible state. After a while, Professor wakes up all dirty. As he walks, his vision becomes blurry and his movement becomes chaotic. He tries to fight the demon and tries to teach properly. However, the demon is just too dominant to control his body. He scratches his chest aggressively as he moves. To know if he is okay, a concerned student goes near the professor to check on him. As a reaction, professor, or now we should say the demon, hits the poor girl and sends her heavy body flying. Because of it, every student in the class runs for their shitty life. Now, professor is fully transforming into a demon. The demon has fully grown into the professor's body as he gets out of it. While escaping, the demon moves its long GPS tentacles to locate and chase after the smelly students. Tragically, many of the students are strangled by the tentacles and get caught one by one. The students have no choice but to scream their chicken lungs out before being converted into monsters. After the beast sucks one of the students' souls, the long-haired boy transforms into a monster too, but still long-haired. On the other hand, Jack and two girls hide in a classroom. The long-haired monster traces the girl's hormone smell and enters their hideout. Jack is traumatized once again when he sees his smelly classmate being mauled to death. It comes for Jack's girlfriend next. Fortunately, Jack can save her by hitting the long-haired monster with a chair. More and more students are now transforming into monsters. Fortunately, Jack and his girlfriend can get out of the school at the expense of the janitor who died. After struggling to start the car, it eventually works out as the couple tries their best chance to escape the monsters. However, as Jack listens to the car's radio, the memory of the massacre of his family flashes back, making him paralyzed. After thinking for a while, Jack stops the car and decides to fight the demon. This time, he does not want to run away from the enemy. Instead, he gets his plumber tools to use as weapons against the demon. As Jack enters the school again, he's immediately greeted by the student monsters. Interestingly, he can fight them fine. After a heated battle and punches left and right, Jack finishes the monsters using his weapons. On the other side, the demon is having a feast as he brutally eats the students' smelly parts one by one. Jack plans to enter the chemistry classroom to face the final boss. However, it is delayed when he confronts a monster again. At first, it is clear that the monster overpowers Jack as he can easily make him fly and injures him by biting his arm. Fortunately, Jack grabs a fire extinguisher and uses it to smash the monster's head to pieces. Before going to the classroom, Jack grabs an axe. As he sees the demon, he cuts all the tentacles that are strangling his classmates, making them free. Unfortunately, Jack is caught and sent to fly by the demon multiple times, but he can still fight back and throws the axe at the demon. Another monster shows up and Jack fights it hand to hand. After defeating the monster, his attention switches to the final boss. Fortunately, Jack remembers what he learned during chemistry class, so he grabs the sodium in a container and throws it inside the demon's mouth. The chemical reacts and explodes as the demon jumps into it, making the demon's head blasted off completely. However, the demon is alive and fights. Jack finishes it when he uses his axe to hit its diabetic heart, finally sending it to meet Jesus. The tragedy ends as Jack kisses his classmate that genuinely cares for him. Ever since that decisive battle, Jack commits to becoming a full-time monster slayer and he no longer runs away from his fears. The movie ends with an old monster slayer fighting a demon attacking his community. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.